Hey everyone, I'm going to do a short video for you here today about how to set up an RTMP server and decoder of your own. So, what is that? What does that mean? So, let's first of all talk about what RTMP is. So, RTMP is Real-Time Multimedia Protocol. And that's a protocol that is used by most of the internet for streaming video. So, if we're sending video to YouTube, Facebook, whatever, we're probably using RTMP. That's what most of these software encoder devices that we use, or sorry, the hardware encoder devices that we use uh, actually are using. So the Teradex series, the, the LiveView Solo, the AJA Hilo, all of them, they're, they're using RTMP in order to send video to the destination. Uh, likewise, the ATEM Mini Pro uh, and that, the Pro ISO also use RTMP to do internet streaming as well. So th things that I'm going to be demonstrating here today apply to those as well as any other uh, piece of hardware or software that can actually generate an RTMP data stream. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, most of the, most of the time, we're when we're using those devices, we're actually doing a live stream out to the internet that we want the the world or some group of people to to watch. What about if we need to get video into our production systems from somewhere else? Say we've got a remote guest that we want to bring in, or there's a second location for an event, and we want to include that video in the uh, the video that we're producing at the main location. Well, that's where we want to be able to receive an RTMP data stream. And there's not a lot of products out there that are capable of doing that. But I've got a solution for you here today. Software is completely free. I'm going to show you exactly what you need. Actually go through the steps of setting up and doing a quick demonstration of it actually working. So the instructions I'm doing here today are for Windows. The the same software is available on Mac and Linux as well, though I'm not going to get into the detail of setting those up. Though you could probably start with the same configuration files that I'm going to be showing you here today. So, we use a piece of software called NGINX. So we need to, we're going to need to download that. We're also going to want to make sure we have the VLC media player installed. We're going to use that for doing video playback. And everything that we're going to be doing here today is totally free. So it's not going to cost anything. Uh, this is a great solution using software and hardware that you probably already have. Alright, so I've made this easy. I've actually set up a link on my website in order to get get the necessary files. So if you point your browser to dgp.li slash rtmp server, it's going to come up with this page here. And there's two, two different sites you need to visit, and you're going to download a total of three different files. So we're going to start with the second link here, the Nginx download. So this is the Nginx software. It's actually a web server, but it has RTMP capability built into it. Normally disabled, but it is there. So while we're here, we're going to go and find this Gryphon download. So Nginx 1.7.11.3 Gryphon. That's the only one here that will actually work uh, for this particular feature. So we're going to go ahead and click on that link, and then we're going to say Save As. And then I'm going to save it in my Downloads folder. We're going to come back to that here in a minute. Now while we're on this page, we also, we're probably going to need to grab the Visual C redistribution. That's on this page, it's the last link that's on here is VC Redist, Redist R E D E I S T underscore x86 dot exe. Now we're going to down, want to download the x86 version, no matter whether we're running 32 or 64 bit versions of Windows. And the reason we get that that 32 bit version is because the Nginx software is 32 bit. So we're going to download that, save that as well, and those are finished downloading. All right, now what I can do that's everything we need from that site. So I'm going to hit the back button on my browser. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this Nginx config file. And that's actually going to download a file from my website. So I'm going to go ahead and say save as. Save that in my downloads directory as well. Now this file has, this zip file has the, the configuration file that we're going to need, as well as two batch files that you can use to start and stop the Nginx software. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my browser. And then we're going to look at those, look at the files uh, and install the Nginx software. All right, so I'm going to navigate to my downloads directory. And I apologize for this being kind of small on your screen. But we're going to start by installing the VC Redist uh, file. So I've actually already done that on my machine, so it's probably going to tell me it's, uh, that it's not necessary. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to cancel out of here. But if it's the first time doing it, uh, you'll just go, go ahead and finish that installation. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the Nginx uh, Griffin.zip file. I'm having a hard time talking here today. And we're going to take all the, take these files and let's copy. And then I'm going to open a new Explorer window and use the Windows E key shortcut up for that. I'm going to go to my C drive and I'm going to create a new folder in here. Call it Nginx, N-G-I-N-X. 
and open that up and then we'll paste in those files that we downloaded and that's, that'll take just a second in order to do that okay that's first step all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually extract the contents of that zip file that we downloaded from my website the nginx rtmp.zip double click on that and we're going to see start and stop dot bat and then there's a conf directory so what i want to do is i'm going to copy the start and stop dot bat so i'm control c and then paste that into that nginx folder that we created just a second ago and then we're going to go into the conf directory and then copy that nginx.conf file and we're going to paste that into the conf directory inside of our nginx folder and there won't already be one in there so this will be the this will be a new file you're not replacing an existing one there and with that software is installed so i'm going to go just clean up things a little bit here um, so with that i'm going to go ahead and start the nginx server so inside my nginx directory there is a start.bat file double click on that and you won't see much happen but it should be running and I double check the task manager here make sure it's really there the details scroll down there it is nginx.exe and there will be three copies in there so software is there running it's ready to go and that's all the configuration we need to do on that everything is, is working at this point now before I proceed too much farther I should mention that in order to get video uh, into the nginx server you'll need to make sure that data can come in from the internet and what you'll need to do to do that is going to vary very greatly based on whatever particular uh, internet router you happen to have so I'm not going to provide instructions on how to do that but essentially what you're going to want to do is make sure that you can port forward uh, TCP port 1935 from from the internet to the computer inside your network that's running this nginx software uh, once you've got that in place then that's basically all you need to do as far as configuration in order to get that traffic inside your network and again I'm not going to provide instructions for that but look for a feature in your router configuration that's called like the virtual server or port forwarding or those kinds of things uh, go on the internet look for your particular brand and model of router for specific instructions on, on how to make that work now, I've already done that that's already that's already been set up and the only other thing that we're going to need to know is the IP address that our, we have for our internet connection. In order to make that easy, I actually have a link that you can go to. So this is djp.li slash myip. And that will bring up a web page that will show you what your current IP address is. And this, is this is a free service that I'm providing on my website as well. And once you've got that, you essentially have all the information that you're going to need to know for somebody outside your network to be able to send video into your network. The only thing we have to do is we have to build the RTMP URL in order to make that work. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and then I'm going to bring up a copy of Notepad and I'm going to show you how to assemble the URL. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'll go with a nice 24 point font. So we'll, we'll need to assemble an RTMP server URL and then a stream key. RTMP URLs look like this, RTMP colon slash slash and then the server. So if, or in this case, the IP address that uh, we just looked up a second ago. So I actually have a shortcut set up and for purposes of the discussion, I'm going to just do sample server.com slash and then we want to put the word live in here. And I'm going to show you in a second why we're doing the word live there. And that's going to be our RTMP URL that's going to get video into our network. From there, the other thing that we need with RTMP is what's called the stream key. Now, you can pick anything you want for this. The only thing is you're going to want to make sure that the, people, the server or equipment that's transmitting is using the same stream key as we use in our VLC or OBS or whatever software that's going to be playing back the video that's received. So in this case, I'm going to do stream one as my stream key. Again, you can use any alphanumeric text that you want. So just remember what you've got. All right. So this live portion that I've got on here, this actually comes from the configuration file that we, we looked at a minute ago. So if we go back in the conf directory and open up this nginx.conf file, I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and I'm going to open it with Notepad++ here. All right, so if you go to the bottom of this, this is where the RTMP server itself is actually configured. I'll blow this up a little bit for you. 
So it was inside of here, and we're telling it, we're creating an RTMP server. It's listening on TCP port 1935, and then chunk size, you don't need to worry about that. And then this application that we're, we're talking about setting up here, that's actually that end of that RTMP URL. So it says application live. That's where that live comes from. So if we look back at our URL, that live on the end, that needs to match what we have here in this RTMP uh, configuration section of this file. Now, the other thing we want to make sure we've got here, so this next line, live on, that word live is not the same live that's above. So this actually always needs to stay live. So even if you change the name of your application, that live on needs to be there. And that's essentially what allows you to receive video and then reach into the RTMP server and pull that down using your VLC. It also has the option of doing a uh, video recording. I've got that turned off here. And there's one other interesting thing that we can do here, and this may be actually, in a lot of cases, more useful and something you use more often than receiving RTMP video on your own computer. This actually lets you push these videos out to another server. So if you wanted to stream to YouTube and Facebook simultaneously, you can use the push feature that's here in this file in order to push those, push that video out to multiple destinations. So you can do as many as you want as long as you've got en enough uh, bandwidth on your internet connection. I should also mention here that this Nginx software uses almost no CPU on your computer whatsoever. It's very, very lightweight. It's not processing the video in any kind of way. All it's doing is receiving it from the RTMP, uh, RTMP device that's sending it to you and then making that available uh, to be received by somebody else. So it's just copying, it's copying data from, what, from the incoming stream to outgoing stream. And it's not doing any other, anything else to it. So you can use a very lightweight, very old computer if you want to. And, that, and there are a lot of tutorials on the internet for how to do the same sort of thing using a Raspberry Pi, which is a $35 computer that runs a ver version of Linux in most cases. So anyway, that said, if you do want to push your video out to multiple destinations, and you can do that simultaneously while we're also doing this other thing with uh, receiving video, you would put in the server the path like we did with the slash live earlier and then a colon and then that stream key so when you go to youtube that's uh, a dot whatever youtube.com um, you'll copy that rtmp url in here and at the end you would do the colon and then the stream key that, you, that youtube gives you there so anyway uh, i've got those lines commented out that's what this this hashtag is that means these lines are not active but i wanted to include that in there so that you'd see a template on how to make that work so if that's something that interests you if you need to send your your video out to multiple destinations you can do this on your own without paying for a service like restream.io or one of the other many that are out there so another great use for this for this uh, application all right so with that i'm going to go ahead and close this we've done all the configuration there that we need and I, we already started the nginx software so the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start sending video to it so i'm going to pull up the configuration for my teradek video go and on the broadcast page and put in put in that rtmp url that we assembled just a moment ago so in this case the computer that i'm streaming to it's its ip address is 10.1.8.88 and there's that live thing that we talked about. And then we have the stream name. Again, you can use anything you want here as long as you're consistent. So I'm calling mine stream one. And that's essentially all I have to do inside of here. I mean, you can come down here and set the bit rate, uh, you know, t to very basically set the quality, level of quality that you want based on the internet connection that you have and the, the internet connection that's being, the, where, the, where the video is being sent from. So I've set that appropriately. I'm going to use 6 megabit here. That's, that's plenty high quality for, for a 1080p stream. Um, so with that said, I click on Apply. And then I'm going to go back to this first page. And I'm going to start playback on the video that I'm sending. So now, now I have video. This is a, a live stream that I did a few days ago. And we'll see here that the, the screen is updating the, thumb, the thumbnail there periodically. At this point, I can actually click on the Go Live button here, start sending video now, using whatever software, whatever hardware you want to use to do the RTMP encoding. And it is now sending that video over to the Nginx software. And it is already there. It's already available. So at this point, all I really need to do is go into the VLC media player that I'm going to use and, and pull that video down. So go ahead, minimize this window. And then I'm going to open up the VLC media player. Minimize these other things, get them out of the way. And fortunately, this is going to be a little bit small for you. 
not much I can do about that. But so we'll go up to up to the media menu and say open network stream. And this needs to be formatted in a very specific way. So this is very similar to the RTMP URL that we set up earlier, but it's just slightly different. So we're going to do RTMP colon slash slash the server address. Only in this case, you're, you're probably going to want to use the local IP address of the computer that you're, you're uh, streaming to instead of the public internet address. So I'm going to do 10.1.8.88 slash live, just like we did before. Now here's where it's different. We do slash and then the stream key, in this case stream one. Instead of doing a colon like we do for that push feature, we do a, a slash. So RTMP colon slash slash IP address slash live, which comes from that configuration file, slash, and then the stream key that we want to use. With that, let's go ahead and click on the play button and with any luck, it will start working. All right, there we go. So now we have video coming in to VLC coming from my Teradek Video Go. And again, this, this video could be coming from anywhere on the internet. Uh, it doesn't have to be local to my trailer like I'm doing right now. It could be anywhere. So if you've got somebody across the country, uh, somewhere else in the world, and, and you, want to, you want to be able to have them send high quality video to you, this is one very easy, very viable, very inexpensive way to do that. Um, now, the amount of latency that happens here, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but it's primarily based on the encoder that you happen to be using and how long it buffers the data before it sends it out. Um, there's very little buffering that occurs here on the receiving end. So in this case, it's about two seconds, uh, but that is going to vary quite a bit based on your encoder uh, and which decoding software that you want to use. I should, should also mention that same URL that we just typed into VLC also works in OBS. So you basically create a video source there, you pull from the internet and type in that URL and then you can use that video source inside of OBS uh, as well. So um, in my case, I would probably want to take this video and make that go full screen, so I'll double click on that. And then probably want to route audio from this to my audio mixer so that I can control that, control the levels, turn it on and off doing any equalization, compression, anything else that I need to do. Uh, but, but there we go. So we've got the video coming in from an RTMP encoder somewhere else on the internet. So anyway, that's about it. It's actually not that hard, especially because I've got a configuration file there. It's already ready to go for you. It makes, that's the hardest part about setting this up is getting that config file to work, and I've already done that hard work for you. So there it is. We've got RTMP video coming into our video production system, and then we can, we, do, we can do whatever we want to with it. So anyway, if you guys have questions about this, you can certainly leave a comment in the, the, the comment section down below on this video, but I can't necessarily guarantee that I'm going to be able to get to it. I've got a lot going on. You're probably more likely to get a, re, a response if you go to our Discord server, and the shortcut to get there is djp.li slash discord. That's D-I-S-C-O-R-D. We've got several hundred people that watch the channel. Who, many of them are, are technical experts, and we'll, we'll be able to, to help out with this as well. I pop my head in from time to time to help make sure that the questions are being answered, and, and I'll uh, weigh in when whenever I need to. So uh, if you happen to be running your own video production business, I'd love if you guys would actually take a look at my crew access website. So it's on my shirt here. So that's C-R-E-W-A-X-I-S. It's a website I, I actually created for running my own video production business. So it does things like keeping track of your events, hiring your crew, keeping track of your finances, invoicing customers. Uh, your, your crew can invoice you on the site as well. Uh, it helps you to keep track of your equipment, helps you to keep track of your communication with your clients, and helps you to build worksheets uh, to, in order to make sure that you're planning an event and have everything you need. So there's a lot going on there. I think it's actually more fully featured than any other site that, out there equivalent, uh, any other site that does the same sort of thing. And I have very affordable plans, including one free plan, which, which you can use for as long as you want. There, there are some feature restrictions on it and some and limits on how many accounts you can have and whatnot, but the free one you can use for as long as you like and different tiers of plans based on the size of your business and, and how, how big how big your crews tend to be and so forth. So anyway, go check that out. That's crewaccess.com. There is a link for that also down in the description of this video as well. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for, for now. So uh, thanks everyone for watching and have a great day.